Welcome home to Summit Hall. Summit Hall is located in North Campus in the Village, our newest residential community. This residence hall offers mostly double rooms with both traditional style and suite style options. A limited number of single style rooms are also available. Residents living in a suite style room will share a room and private bathroom with their roommate. Suite style bathrooms are cleaned weekly with a sink that's located right outside the bathroom for added convenience. Each room comes furnished with a bed, desk, chair, and dresser. A large window in each room lets you enjoy plenty of natural light. There are kitchen areas on each floor with a microwave and sink for convenient cooking and cleanup. Each building in the village has a unique ground floor lobby with common areas and a full kitchen that includes a stainless steel fridge, oven, stovetop, and sink. Need groceries? Head to the on-campus Publix, only a short walk away. When you don't feel like cooking, the hub is right outside your door. At this dining hall, there are a wide variety of options that change daily, from a burger and fries to vegetarian stir fry. You can also visit the nearby housing service desk at Holly M, where you can go if you have any issues with your keys. You'll also find a printer here that all students can access. Grab a coffee between classes from the Starbucks just a short walk away. Here, you can order ahead to skip the line or visit the walk-up window for speedy service. You'll find a wellness and recreation center at The Fit, where you can also lounge and enjoy our beautiful Florida weather in our zero-entry resort-style pool. When it's time to do your laundry, you can visit the laundry room on the first floor. Here, you can use quarters or swipe with your USF ID to pay with bull bucks. It's up to you. To learn more about our housing options, visit usf.edu slash housing and get ready to live the bull's life. Coming to you from the beautiful University of South Florida campus in Tampa, it's USF Housing Live! Welcome everyone. This is the fourth episode of USF Housing Live Season 7. I'm your host, Julia O'Hara, with Housing and Residential Education at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa. Housing and Residential Education is here to answer your questions as you prepare for college. If you're joining us live, type your questions in the comments and we will answer you in real time. Tonight's episode is all about your academic success. This evening, we'll be speaking with a team member from Academic Initiatives with Residential Education and an advisor with College of Undergraduate Studies. But before we get started, we have a few exciting announcements to share with you. USF Housing and Residential Education has made changes to the COVID-19 protocol inside the residence halls based on new guidance from the CDC. We have fully reopened common areas, study lounges, community kitchens, multi-purpose rooms, and other community gathering spaces. We anticipate a robust offering of group engagement activities, educational programs, and other opportunities that contribute to a vibrant campus community. And guests and visitors are now permitted from outside the residential community and buildings. For more information about the university's intentions to return to pre-COVID operations later this summer, please visit usf.edu slash coronavirus. And have you selected your room on campus yet? The room self-selection process remains available until June 30th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. This can be accessed through the housing portal linked on our website at usf.edu slash housing. And living learning communities applications close on June 15th, so be sure to submit your application soon. More information can be found at usf.edu slash LLC. So now let's welcome our first guest this evening. Brandi Cruz is a coordinator for academic initiatives with residential education at USF. Hi, Brandi, how are you this evening? Hi, Julia, I'm doing well, how are you? I'm great and thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. We have a lot of great questions for you. So are you ready to get started? Of course. Okay, let's jump in. So to start, let's talk about your role with academic initiatives. And um, for those that may be new to the university um, or incoming students and families, what academic initiatives is? Yeah, of course. So um, we will start with what academic initiatives is. So academic initiatives is one of 
the units that is under residential education. And so um, what we do is we really work with our living learning communities in housing and residential education. We also have faculty engagement that happens. So we are building those relationships and those collaborations with our faculty across campus. And we also host some large scale events around some academic pieces, career readiness, um, and really kind of bring the learning outside of the classroom directly into the residence halls. Um, my role specifically on the team is actually as one of the two coordinators for academic initiatives. So I work closely with, of course, our living learning communities and helping implement those throughout the year, as well as recruiting for the following years. Um, I also work closely with our faculty in helping them program and connect with students um, to help support their career goals and aspirations. So we love to connect our faculty with our students. Um, and then I also really support the logistics behind some of our large scale programming um, that we will dive into a little later today. Perfect. Thank you for that, Brandy. And let's talk about um, the support and resources that Academic Initiatives provides to residents. Um, you mentioned some of them, so let's dive into those a little bit deeper. Yeah, of course. So um, there are three big parts to academic initiatives. Um, and I think the overarching piece is that we really value creating a student experience that allows students to succeed personally, academically, and professionally. Um, and so through that, we have our living learning communities, which um, I know our program director came on an earlier episode this season to talk about those. Um, but we host about 10 living learning communities. Um, and so basically it's a place for students who are in similar majors or have similar interests to live together. Um, they will get career readiness, activities and events specifically tailored to their majors as well as in-hall academic advising, in-hall tutoring. So there are a lot of great academic success opportunities there. Um, we also work closely with our faculty engagement. And so our faculty, we have two different um, faculty that works with us. We have our faculty in residence, which we have five who live with us on campus, um, and you will find them in various halls. And then we also have our faculty fellows program where we have about 25 faculty members who do not live with us, but engage with us in the hall. Um, and so that's kind of where our faculty engagement comes from. We really like to connect with our faculty outside of the classroom and bring that into the residence halls. Um, um, so students are able to engage with faculty in a more organic setting um, because it helps create those relationships beyond just a classroom setting. Um, the third piece is our large scale programming. We do a lot of really cool large scale programs throughout the year. Um, some of those are house calls. We also have final reviews as well as achievable. Um, and we have a new one called faculty hour. Um, and so our faculty hour is a great opportunity for students to connect with our faculty for about an hour. Um, it has been a virtual event as we've been doing it throughout COVID, but we are hoping to continue it into next year as well. Um, there are a variety of topics that are talked about. We have one coming up this summer around identity development in the workplace and what that means. Um, and we will have some faculty join us for that. But we also have house calls, which is a great first start to the semester. And then we wrap it all up with final reviews. That is so cool, Brandy. I know that the students find so much um, value and success through those programs. Before we move on, I do want to just touch on um, house calls for a second. Just for those that may not know what um, exactly that is, can you give a quick overview of um, what that looks like in the halls? Yes, yeah, so House Calls is one of our largest programs and it is the first program that we do at the start of the academic year. Um, it is something that is held within each residence hall. And so we work closely with campus partners as well as faculty members to join us um, for a nice meal very quickly um, and then we disperse out into the halls where students are able to connect with faculty as well as a variety of resources on campus to support their academic success and any of their personal and professional needs. Um, something that students really enjoy is it allows it helps with the transition, right? So we know that coming from high school and going into college can sometimes be a little bit of a shock because it is very different. And so House Calls is a great opportunity for first year students to start connecting with those resources as well as faculty members that are going to support them throughout their next four years at USF. 
Great. Thank you so much for that, Brandy. And I am going to ask you about events in a minute, but I did want to just throw this question in there because we are coming up on the um, application deadline for living learning communities. Um, yes. That is June 15th. That is the deadline to apply for an LLC. So um, I know I didn't send this to you in our list of uh, pre-planned questions, but I do want to go over it because it's one of our last times that we can talk about it before the application closes. And I know you work really closely with LLCs. So can you just give a quick overview for those watching on what an LLC is and what the value a student can find um, by living in one? Yeah, absolutely. So LLCs are a community. It is, of course, LLCs are short for living learning communities. Um, and it is a community where students can live together, um, where they are taking either they have the same major or they have similar interests. Um, and what they will do is they will live with this group throughout the year. Um, and there will be a variety of events that are happening. So you will have um, in-hall tutoring. So I know that our honors LLC does does in-hall tutoring to support students in some of their courses. Um, we also have that in a variety of our other LLCs as well. Um, we also have in-hall academic advising. So our advisors love coming in the hall to support our students in registering for the next semester and providing that guidance because sometimes it's overwhelming in degree works. And so having someone so close is very easy um, to have those conversations, especially in the comfort of our own spaces. Um, we also have a variety of events. So we have career readiness events. We also love to take students off campus when we are able to. Um, our Bulls business community actually will take students on campus uh, campus tours, um, community like um, I'm sorry, company tours. Um, and so with those company tours, they'll be able to go behind the scenes to really talk about the logistics and the business side of things. Um, one time they did go to the Amelie Arena, which is really cool because that's where Tampa Bay Lightning plays. Um, and they kind of got to see the back end of that. And so there are a lot of really great opportunities that you might not necessarily get. Um, and so it's a great opportunity to be a part of. Another thing is that numbers speak volumes. And we know that our students who participate in living learning communities actually have higher GPAs than students who do not um, participate in the living learning communities. We also know that the students who participate are wanting to come back for the next year because they had such a great experience that they're wanting to come back to USF because they feel connected and they feel like they have a purpose and a belonging here. Um, and so that is really kind of what LLCs do and it's a really great opportunity. So I encourage anyone who is interested um, or has any additional questions, please drop them um, or email us at livinglearning at usf.edu and we'll be happy to answer them um, later on in the week. Thank you. That's that's great, Brandy. I was going to ask you about that too, but I'm glad that you brought it up with the um, statistics about, you know, we know that students who live on campus um, succeed academically and personally more so than someone who doesn't. And then for someone to be living in a living learning community to do even better, it's um, like you said, the numbers speak for themselves. So it's a really great opportunity for students. So I highly encourage everyone watching if you haven't done so yet to check those out to see if there's an LLC right for you. So um, jumping back to the work with academic initiatives, let's talk about some events residents can look forward to this fall and spring. I know you just did a great job with your team the past year, turning things totally from in-person to virtual, uh, a, a really, really hard thing to do, but you all did a really successful job at that. So we're moving back to pre-COVID operations, like I said at the beginning of the broadcast. So what um, are some events that, that students can look forward to this year? Well, first and foremost, you can expect them to be in person. So we are very excited about that. We are very excited to be connected with students again. Um, and so I really want to break this down by the fall and the spring semester because each semester does look a little different. Um, so in the fall, we host three large scale events. We have house calls, which is something that I talked about a little earlier. That's the first event that we kick off with for the academic year. We also have Real Talk, which is an event where we are able to have dialogue dialogue around topics of social justice, equity, and inclusion. Um, and we bring in community partners as well as a variety of faculty members and some students to come in and have these conversations and dialogue with one another um, to really enhance and broaden our knowledge of social justice, equity, and inclusion. And so there are some really great conversations there. We did one in February around the politics of being black, and we had an entire panel of black men come and talk about their experiences. Um, and it was just very powerful and very very um, 
informative as well as a really great, deep, vulnerable conversation. And so it is a really um, great space to be in. Um, and so that is something that you can look for, forward to in the middle of the semester. Towards the end of the fall semester, you can find my favorite event, which is final reviews. Um, I love final reviews so much. It is one of the best programs, I think, um, and it is very large. We have approximately 2,000 students join us each semester for this event. Um, we have our faculty members who volunteer their time to host an additional review session to prepare students for their final exams. So um, it has looked in person in the past. This year, we are actually hoping to do a hybrid model where some will be recorded and some will be in person. So we're hoping to offer more sessions through that. Um, typically in the fall, we see roughly 15 to 18 different sessions um, that come out and we're able to, of course, give those to our students to help them academically be successful after the semester ends. Um, in the spring, we kick it off with Achievable. Achievable is a program that we host um, for our residential students and also our non-residential students who get below a 2.75 GPA in the fall semester. So it really is a program that allows us to work with students to help them get study skills as well as any writing skills. Um, and we do this in collaboration with the Academic Success Center. And so we are really trying to help those students prepare for a strong uh, spring semester. We also have another real talk that happens in the spring as well as our last lecture series. Last lecture series is an awesome opportunity where we ask one of our faculty members to come and give an inspirational, motivational, um, lecture like it was their last. And so it's a great opportunity and a very high profile event that we like to host in the Oval Theater in the Marshall Student Center. And then we wrap it all up again with final reviews. So as you can tell, we are pretty packed for the academic year. In between that, you might find us do a podcast here and there to highlight some resources that will be on our Spotify account. You also might find us host events around our Men of Excellence initiative where we provide additional support and resources to our male residential students through a variety of programs that really support their personal academic and professional skills as they progress throughout their four years at USF and into their careers. That's great, Brandy. And what, you know, what I love about a lot of these events, like finals review, for example, is not only are you providing the support for the residents, but also students that don't live on campus, they have access to those um, those finals review as well. So if you're watching and you're not planning on living on campus, some of these um, opportunities will be available to you for being a USF student. Um, a quick question we got from the audience I'm going to yeah. answer, it's about housing. Um, Gaddy, who's watching, thank you so much Gaddy for watching and for asking your question, is wondering when the last day to select a room for the fall is. So room selection for fall spring term does end June 30th at 1159 p.m. Um, after that you'll be you'll work with our team for them to select a room on your behalf but if you're looking to select your room or change your room that will need to be done before June 30th. Um, and Brandy I have just one more question for you unless anyone um, in the audience has any questions that come in before we we go to a quick commercial break but um, if a student or a family member that's watching wants to contact your team, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Absolutely. So anyone who is wanting to contact us to learn more about living learning communities, faculty engagement, or any of the large scale um, programs that we have talked about, you can email us at livinglearning at usf.edu. We check this email daily, so we are constantly in there um, responding to emails. And so we look forward to hearing any questions that you have. If you're like me, I am a processor, so I probably wouldn't have any questions right now. So it's also good to email us afterwards, too, and I will be happy to answer those for you all. Great. Thank you so much, Brandy, and thanks for being with us tonight. Have a great night. We'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Have a great night, everyone. All right, and thank you again for Brandy for taking the time to chat. It's time for us to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more USF Housing Live right after this. Welcome home to Bay the Hall. Bay the Hall is located in the heart of North Campus and is only steps away from the Argos Exchange Dining Hall and Castor Beach. 
here, you can live the bull's life in an environment best suited to helping you connect with others. Beta Hall is a traditional style residence hall. That means you share a room with your roommate and a bathroom with your floor mates. Each room is located near a community bathroom that is cleaned daily. Every room already comes furnished with a bed, desk, chair, and dresser. This style of campus living lets you embrace the roommate experience and support one another as you enjoy everything USF has to offer. Check out the several kitchens and kitchenettes where you can cook your favorite meals. If you don't feel like cooking, make your way to one of the campus dining locations nearby. Argos Exchange is right next door where you can use a meal swipe to get an entree and fountain drink from different rotating restaurant options. Or try the Bulls Express convenience store if you want to grab something on the go. Bring a friend and try some of these dining options that cater to all dietary needs. When it's time to do your laundry, just bring quarters or use your USF ID to pay with bull bucks in the facility on the first floor. Have some downtime? Grab your sunscreen and take a walk or jog around our beautiful campus. To learn more about our housing options, visit usf.edu slash housing. Get ready to live the bull's life. Welcome back. I'm Julia O'Hara, and if you're just now joining us, this is USF Housing Live, and we're here to help you prepare to live the bull's life at USF. So ask us your questions in the comments, and we will answer you live on the show. Our second guest this evening is an ECM advisor and adjunct instructor with the College of Undergraduate Studies at USF, Shane Combs. Hi, Shane. How are you this evening? Doing fantastic. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat. We have some questions planned for you. So are you ready to jump in? I am. Okay, cool. So first, let's start off with a little introduction. Um, what is your role at the Office of Undergraduate Studies? Yeah, so I'm the advisor for exploratory students, maybe what our parents' generation would call being undeclared. So I help first-year students find their best fit major here at USF. Awesome. And so when thinking about what major to go into, um, what should a student consider when choosing a major? Yeah, that can be a really difficult question because every student is looking to get different things out of their major or future career. So what I'd like to do, if you don't mind, is pivot just a little bit and tell you my advice for any student trying to find, you know, what that best fit major is. So for me, there are a lot of great resources here at USF, but three come to mind immediately. So first is student clubs. We have a great website where you just type in what you're interested in, and they'll show you one of our over 800 student clubs. You can get involved and network with older students who have been through what you're going through. We just mentioned networking with students, but what about networking with faculty? Right. And so one thing that makes college very different from high school is all your teachers are also active researchers uh, in their field. Uh, so it can be a little intimidating to deal with these really cool people. So we have an office here, the Office of Undergraduate Research, which allows you to get a faculty mentor. And then finally, I want to talk about the Center for Leadership and Civic Engagement called CLCE. Now, we hear all the time about these internships, which are really great. Uh, but often a student's not getting an internship to their second or third year. So what the CLCE does is help you prepare for that by following volunteering and leadership opportunities within your interests. And so I think that's the, really the biggest way to kind of find out what your major should be is getting involved with these resources that are outside of the classroom. That's great advice. Thank you for that, Shane. And when it comes to seeing your academic advisor, how often should a student see them? very often and very early. Uh, so one thing you have to recognize as you come to a university like USF, we're a large university, it can take two or three weeks to see your academic advisor during normal times. That lead time can get even larger doing registration, final exams. So you're gonna to wanna to see them really early in the semester, get that rapport going, so that whenever you do need something, maybe you can just email them, right? So instead of waiting that two or three weeks, you shoot them an email, and by the time you are meeting with them, they have everything solved. So uh, you want to meet with them early, often, and always start with an email. Perfect. And so let's, um, I kind of, I've asked two questions in one here. Sure. So 
What is the format now when meeting with an advisor? I know with um, the pandemic over the past year, everything's been virtual. What does mm -hmm. it look like moving forward and how does that connection initially happen? Yeah, so that's a, a great question. So let's tease out a few things for that. So first, uh, what I tell everyone, uh, this analogy, USF is the federal government, every major psychology, business, engineering, they are state government. So what that means is they have the ability to set a lot of their own policies. So it's not a, you know, everyone's doing the same thing. You may have to Google and go to your major's website to see what they're doing. But I think the good news for everybody is around June 28th, we expect the vast majority of majors to start offering in-person advising again, definitely by the time the fall semester starts. But we have learned that virtual can be very useful. So I do also think that a lot of departments, mine included, will keep virtual. Uh, we have a lot of students that live in the Bay Area, but that could be 30, 40, 50 minutes away. So we've really learned that uh, we can effectively advise you virtually. And if that keeps you from driving an hour to campus for, for the only that, then that's a great thing as well. So we're looking to bring back in person, but infuse a lot of the technology that we've learned over the last year. I think that's a great point. You know, our office sort of learned the same thing um, through different virtual appointments that they can be super mm -hmm. valuable, especially for someone that may not be able to make it all the way to campus, like you said. But um, having that in-person portion of it, I think, is really important to some people as well. So that's that's great to hear. So going to changing a major, you know, mm -hmm. big decision, a lot goes into it. Um, what are things a student should think about when making that decision and then how did they actually change their major? Yeah, so going back to my analogy again, really important to know that every major has very different processes. Some majors can be declared online with a few clicks of the keys. Some may have an in-person demand. Some may have prerequisites, meaning you can't just choose any major just because you want to. You need to do your research. Some majors uh, like nursing and social work even have an application and interview process. So it all begins by just doing a little research, do a little Google search, um, and then if you're still lost, connect to whoever your current major advisor is. So you're in major one, you're looking to go to a different major, you can still go to your current major advisor, they're not gonna be mad at you, we just want you to be happy and in the right degree, and they can often help you understand what needs to be done to make the switch if it's not obvious by your own internet research. Great, and um, Shane, this, you know, this could be a really long answer because a lot, this goes into a lot. But in your opinion, how can students best position themselves for success at USF? Yeah, like you said, there's a lot of things that you will have to do uh, that you may not have had to do in high school. So then I go back to the one thing that controls all that, which is time management. Uh, one of the most adult things, I know it sounds boring, uh, but you got to think about you're going to have to work twice as hard to do well in college as you did in high school, no matter what you did. And then we're telling you, right, I told you, I want you to join a student club. I want you to volunteer. I want you to meet your faculty. It can be a lot of hours. Um, so you really have to, in a very quick manner, uh, step up your time management game. And there's still plenty of time to have fun, but you really need to map out your day, map out your week, your month, your semester, and you will find time for all that fun stuff along with all the new obligations you have, but you just gotta think about it. Great advice. That student planner definitely comes in handy. For sure mm -hmm. need that. So um, Shane, just to wrap up everything today or this evening, how would a person watching um, or a family member, if they want to get in contact with their advisor right now or someone from your office, uh, who would they contact for that? Yeah, so again, we have 87 majors here at USF, right? So countless people you could contact. Again, I always start with a Google search, USF College of Business Advising, USF College of Engineering Advising. We all have websites where you can find us. Uh, me personally, you can just go to usf.edu slash ECM. Uh, but again, every major is going to have different communication protocols. We will have them listed on the website. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to do your research. There's not a one space where all the advisors live or get emails to. Uh, but it should not be that difficult to find um, your advisor in the digital era. Perfect. Well, Shane, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us this evening. Of course, it was my pleasure. All right, have a great night.
You too. So thank you again to Shane for all that valuable information. If you have more questions about living on campus at USF, please email us at housing at usf.edu or call us at 813-974-0001. Be sure to join us for our next episode on Wednesday, June 9th at 7 p.m. Eastern, where we will be covering frequently asked questions for new students at USF. You can watch on our Facebook or YouTube page, the USF Class of 2025 Facebook group, or the USF Parent and Family Engagement Facebook page. USF Housing Live is produced by Housing and Residential Education at the University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto is best place to live, best place to work, best place to learn. Thank you to tonight's guests, Brandi Cruz and Shane Combs, for joining me this evening. Thank you to our production crew, to you, our viewers, and of course, there's always just one last thing. Go Bulls! Good night, everyone.